I'm Donnie Seymour. He's Kyle Provines. And every Tuesday, or just about every Tuesday, Larry comes on from Wager Web to talk a little bit of NFL football. Before we do that, thank you guys for coming in here and supporting the show. We really appreciate it. 73,400 people have hit the subscribe button to us right here at sportsbookreview.com. And also my partner here, Kyle Provines, rocking and rolling and ready to go, pulling double duty on a Tuesday. I'm excited to talk NFL football, Kyle. It's here. Week 10. Let's get it going. Week 10. That's crazy, right? We're in double digits in the week. Yeah, I mean, what the down. hell? Oh, damn. What the hell is going? I mean, I am excited for Thanksgiving. It's my favorite day of the year. So uh, as we get, I love the holiday season. But good lord, you know the time is going by. But what a what a week! I mean, a ton of close games, a ton of nail biters, and then of course, as we all predicted, the biggest blowout on the slate was uh, the Saints and Buccaneers, the one we penciled in as the biggest mismatch of the week, right? Uh, a crazy week, a lot of fun. Even last night's game brought the action a little bit. It was yeah. fun. Uh, so I'm excited for Week Ten. Uh, weather doesn't seem like it's going to be a concern again, which is kind of nice. So it's going to be a lot of fun. And of course, the fans love it. We love it every time Larry is here. And I'm excited to talk a little Dolphins with Larry as well. So uh, we're glad to have him in here as well. Glad to yeah, be here. we're going to have. Yo, no, it's going to be great, Larry. We're going to have some fun with you. And we do appreciate you coming on each and every Tuesday here, yeah. at least every other Tuesday with us, talking a little fun. And it's a great week to have Larry on, too, because we're going to get to some fun out of those Miami Dolphins in just a bit here. But looking overall at the car, how do you know 2020 is a messed up season? Last night, we had 57 points in a Jets football game that they participated in and almost pulled off the victory. So wild stuff here. But looking last week, Kyle brings it right up here. Great segue getting into this with you, Larry. When we take a look at the NFL action on Sunday, we were sitting here in November and we had great weather, which equals great scoring from a fantasy perspective, a gambling perspective, because we like to bet overs. It was a fun week to look ahead. One of those nice Indian summers here up in the Northeast, Larry. A lot of fun we had on Sunday with some high scoring. Yeah, I see you guys uh, unseasonably warm in, in the yeah. Northeast. And uh, yes. it, it's like you said, I mean, I think there was only uh, four uh, games that went under. Uh, this past Crazy. week. And, uh, yep. you know, when you come to look at it, if you look at the Kansas City game, if it's regular November weather, that might have been a different game. Same yep. thing with Buffalo. If it was regular November weather in Buffalo, might have been a different thing. Hopefully we can get two or three weeks out of this nice weather and, yes. uh, you know, give us some really good football that way. Yeah, I completely agree. And I, I got to tell you, you know, I watch the red zone. That's how I watch football on Sundays. And I go read back and watch. And when he says it's the witching hour, he is not joking. Mm -hmm. This week was absolutely insane in the fourth quarter, especially those early games, that Raiders-Chargers games. What's going through your head, Larry, in those fourth <laughs> quarters? Are, is it just like, is it, you know, heart attack it's, central for the books in those fourth it's, quarters? It's like, nail-biting because before the, the games start, you more or less know what you need. And uh, that uh, Chargers game, crazy ending oh. fourth quarter. They can't hold a... a a, a lead in the fourth quarter, and a lot of players know that. Uh, look at the Miami game, down to the fourth quarter, down to a missed field goal. It's uh, It was a nail-biter this weekend. It really was, more than any other weekend uh, uh, previous. I mean, you, it went down to the to the wire in a lot of these games, and it's a nail-biter when you know exactly what the book needs, and it's just there at, at the very end, and it is. Nail-biter Sunday it was. It, it's amazing when you look at it, Larry, too, because it's always nice to get that perspective because us as gamblers, if you're just taking a side, it's almost like you have the game in hand, specifically looking at maybe the Atlanta Falcons game. You are blowing the Denver Broncos out of the water, and then all of a sudden, if you flip back up, the Broncos have the ball at the end of the football game with a chance to get an outright victory. It's wild how it comes down to. Now, usually, you know, gamblers are looking at maybe one, two, or three games that might be shifting from a book's perspective, Larry. You guys look at the entire board, and it's almost like, you know, if you could equate it to, like, election night, already up, now you're down, up and down, up and down. You just try to find that middle part. It's amazing to watch, Larry. And and nowadays, in the old days, you didn't have live wagering. Nowadays, True. you have the live wagering. So yeah. it's not just what the game is coming down to. It's what everybody's doing live. What are the lines are they getting in the last seven, eight minutes of a game? Which way are they going? So it's, uh, yeah, it's a little bit like election night, man. Up and down and up and down. It was a crazy Sunday. No, it was great stuff there. Welcome in everybody in the chat box. Abel's in here celebrating his Raiders once again. Vitalis is in here. Akbar, Tez, uh, welcome in. We're going to have a great show here and go over an hour of NFL action. But for now, right now, we have Larry from WagerWeb having some fun. And we always like to have the gaming perspective here, right, when we look across the board. But also, we love the fan perspective. And if you guys have been following along each and every time Larry comes on, we know he's a Dolph he is a Dolphins fan. 
And the Dolphins look like they are in good shape, not only from a head coaching position, not only from draft capital. You have a gamer. All those years we watched Tua at Alabama, we knew he could step up and shine in the brightest of moments, thrown into the mix, first NFL game. All you need to do is get the victory against the Rams. He did that. Then you needed him to perform game two in a tough environment out in Arizona against a very game Cardinals team. He looked fantastic in the third and fourth quarter, which is exactly what you want, Larry. How about those minds? the Dolphins pulling off another victory for your boys. That is like I was telling Cobbs. It's hard getting used to a left-handed quarterback. I thought he did a great job. Uh, you know, when he ran the ball, he didn't slide. He put his head down, and, and it was good to see that. Uh, it's You know, you're, look, you're looking at two quarterbacks. When Murray came out, everyone said he was too small. When Tua came out, everyone thought that the injury was going to hold him back, yet we saw probably – the best game on Sunday and probably one of the better games this season between those two guys. And it was just great to see that. Great to see uh, Flores' uh, defense coming through. It was just a great game. And as a Dolphin fan, couldn't ask for anything better. And, and getting the win, uh, a lot of people were looking at the, at the Cardinals, man. There was a lot of money on the Cardinals. And uh, yeah. seeing the Dolphins take it up like that was fantastic. Yeah, I was one of those suckers who had money on the Cardinals as well, so it was a little heartbreaking, but it was a lot of fun to watch. I mean, my goodness, and trust me, just embrace that left-handed rollout as a 49er fan. <laughs> Watching Steve Young roll out, it's going to be exciting for 10 years. You're going to have all these bootleg defenses don't know how to defend. It's going to be a lot of fun. But shifting over to the Sunday night game, I mean, we came into Week 9, and I think most people uh, would have said the Tampa Bay Bucks are the favorite in the NFC. They had one of the better offenses, Brady on fire, probably one of the top two or three defenses in the NFL. Then they get absolutely demolished by the Saints at home. Are the Saints? Are you seeing more money come in on the Saints? Are they now the favorite in the NFC in your eyes? I I think in my eyes, them and the Packers are probably the two best teams in the NFC. I mean, you could talk about the Seahawks. They have the worst defense in the NFL, and that's not going to win games for you down the road. Uh, there was a lot of money shifting on uh, on Tampa Bay. Uh, you know, people like to bet not so much Tampa Bay. They're betting Brady. And same way with New England when he was with New England. Uh, they, they, you know, a lot of money shifted on, on Tampa Bay. And, you know, you look at these last two games, the two times they played them the first game of the season, destroyed them the first game of the season. Now you're looking at, you know, between the two games, I think Brady's been intercepted five times, sack six. And uh, just uh, I, I think uh, the Saints are a powerhouse in the NFC. I think it's, you know, Drew Brees is le leading the NFC in completion percentage, I think like 74%, yeah. third best defense in the NFL. I, people talk about the AFC a lot, but I think uh, the Saints are, are, are a true team. I think uh, we need to keep an eye on them going through the rest of the season. Yeah, we'll see how it comes up, too, Larry, because when you take a look at the Saints, we do know, I mean, Drew Brees looked very effective the past couple weeks. I mean, let's not forget they were in the windy city of Chicago in the mid-30s pulling out a victory over a pretty good Bears defense. Then you go down to Tampa Bay and a little bit of wind and rain, and that offense was awesome. And also keep in mind, they got three key performers back on the offensive unit at wide receiver for that game. They were lockstep each and every time, blowout at the half. They could have hung, as me and Kyle talked about on Sunday, you know, 55, 60 points on that team for Tampa Bay, which we thought would be one of the better teams in the NFL on the defensive side of the football. But also, just from your perspective as well, because from coming from a book's advantage to what we look at as players, you see that game and everybody wants to jump on. Like, you just see that, like, just a week before, hey, Tampa's the best team, even though don't worry about their record. They get Antonio Brown moving forward. And that narrative completely changes the following week as over to the Saints. And even in the COVID-19 era, when you take a look at, hey, all it takes is one positive test and a guy could be out two to three weeks. From your angle here, looking at some of the money coming in or not even the money coming in, how should you play like the NFC? And keep in mind as well, we don't have any home field advantage. Like, you don't have to go to Seattle and beat the 12th man. Probably not going to have any fans there the rest of the year. No, it's 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 been a strange season. We all know that. I think the the whole thing with with Brady is that everybody talks about Antonio Brown. There was so much talk about Antonio Brown and and you know the negativity he brings. They're not even giving the guy a chance to really suit up and give him a couple of games under his belt, see what he could do for Brady. Uh, you know, but here, anytime uh, Brady is playing, anytime you know, just like New England, just like with Tampa Bay. The money, you know, this week again, uh, money line, you know, the, it's opening up. There's a lot of uh, action on, on New England again. Uh, you know, Steelers and, and uh, Bengals, 
Uh, I heard something about Roethlisberger now. Uh, we're not sure if he's going to play or not. I guess we'll know in a couple of days. But uh, there's a lot of money going on the Bengals side on this game, which is hard to believe because it's a double digit. It's opened up at double digits. I think now it's seven. And uh, so it, it's been a surprising year. Uh, it's just uh, everyone's just doing things a little bit different than they did in previous years when you when you look at some of these games and, and, and uh, the picks that our players are making. No, you're exactly correct, because if you can take a look at anything from the past, just last week we saw a similar incident there with Matthew Stafford and the Detroit Lions going on that COVID reserve list, has to pass a couple tests, and you know by game day still had to pass a final test before they let him play. It is possible. We don't know how much Ben Roethlisberger was actually going to practice this week with the couple knee injuries there versus the Dallas Cowboys. So we'll see it and let it play out, but it's always interesting to see where the book set the line, then they take him off the board. How do you react? You know, Because, again, we're not going to get to see him practice, so how are those knees actually holding? Up. Well, we the line, the line hasn't day. moved. The yeah. line hasn't moved uh, since this afternoon. I've yeah. been looking at it, and it's not only him. It's uh, four starters on the Steelers that yeah. they uh, think uh, you know are under the uh, COVID right now. They got to wait, I think, three to four days. But the line hasn't moved. They haven't taken it down, so uh, you know it's still at seven. But yeah, we we you know every game that we look at, you don't know what's going to happen two and three days. Uh, into the week is is you know are they going to have four players missing three players missing i think the books have handled it pretty well uh, it's the first time that we've seen something like this it's not like somebody getting hurt playing basketball on his day off and you know the line moves because he's not going to play this is every week uh, i i appreciate these guys putting up these lines because they got a lot on their hands it's a little bit different this year they got a lot to worry about uh and a lot to uh you know think about before they put those lines up yeah, I also like the NFL. Basically, it has that mindset, Larry, that says we're going ahead no matter what happens in these aspects. Because even when you look at Ben Roethlisberger, who was a close contact to McDonald, who did contact the COVID-19 virus, they sat together on the plane on the way home. So we'll see how that plays out the rest of this week. But it is interesting times in the NFL. Again, forging forward. Even if we do miss games, they're going to add a couple playoff games. They are destined to complete this season. So as we talk Week 10 heading into it, it's always a fun look earlier in the week. Now, I know Larry would like to get to the Philadelphia Eagles and the New York Giants as his favorite plays of the week, but we. We will spare him that. You got a good Thursday night football game, Indianapolis and Tennessee. You got Seattle and the Rams. Where is Larry looking to have some fun this week in week 10? Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, I was looking at the Steelers Bengals only because I think Joe Burrows is going to have a really breakout game soon. He's had quite a few. He just can't get the win. Steelers have the best uh, sack defense in the NFLs. And Burrows has been sacked 28 times. And I was thinking maybe yeah. this week. And it shows uh, there's been a little bit of action on the Bengals. Uh, you know, I don't think the Steelers are going to go undefeated. They, they, they are going to lose. And that's because I'm a Dolphin fan. And every year <laughs> I go through the same thing. But uh, and also, uh, I like the Ravens game. I really do like the Ravens game in the, in the seven points uh, this week. So I'm not even going to touch my Dolphins this week. Don't oh, want to jinx them. Uh, I, I like the Ravens and I like the Steelers Bengals this week. Uh, I'll tell you, Larry, one other game I'm looking at this week, and I'm curious to see uh, maybe where some of the action's coming in on, especially this total at 56, 56 and a half. Buffalo and Arizona, we saw these two offense. I mean, the Arizona offense seems like they can't be stopped. The Buffalo offense got back on track this last week against Seattle. Both defenses very vulnerable. Uh, what's the early action coming in on that game, uh, if there's any? It's 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 even right now, and my thought is I don't think Arizona's going to lose two in a row. I, I don't think Kyler Murley's going to allow that. I, as a Dolphin fan, I, I need to see Buffalo lose, and this is the one game that uh, it might happen. But uh, listen, those two teams, those two offenses are explosive, and uh, Murray, man, I, I think he's got a great arm. Um, I, I like the fact that uh, he played his heart out this past week. Didn't win. I don't see him losing two in a row. And I do think it will go way over. I really do. I think it's going to be just like this past week. All but four or five games went over, man. It was just crazy. Yeah. That is what we certainly like to look forward to. A lot of points. Have some fun, Kyle. We, yeah. we know his big DFS guy. It's a lot of fun. When the more, hey, look, we always like those 14 to 10 games, but we need a bunch of those 31 28 type of things here. Larry from wagerweb.eu, before we let you go, tell us a lot of good things here and what we can expect in the future from WagerWeb. Well, guys, I'll tell you what, I want everybody out there to look closely and look forward to our Thanksgiving promo coming mm. up uh, Thanksgiving uh, yeah. Thursday. 
We always put on a nice contest and promos for that week. So we're going to have a great Thanksgiving contest. We have our NFL weekly contest on a weekly basis. And, of course, great cash bonuses, great customer service, man. Looking forward to talking to a lot of people. Love it. Big things ahead there. Thank you, Larry, once again for coming on on Tuesdays. We really appreciate it. Very, you know, affable with information and we have fun having you on. Hope to see you in the future. And if we don't see you next week, hopefully we see you again on the next Tuesday after that. But great times again. And go Dolphins out there, Larry. Huh? Thank you, guys. Absolutely, man. You guys have a great week. Appreciate you letting me come on.